Hey all viewers, tonight I will be doing somewhat of an intermission. Um, in my Claymore um, manga series, the sort of narrative and commentary that I usually do, um, thus far I have read 14 chapters of this manga. Um, and I think at this point, considering the space of time with which I've taken to actually get this far, and the type of, um, basically the type of, um, series I'm doing, in which basically I not only read it but give my commentary and opinions, I think I should just take a break and just discuss overall what I think about it. Now, keep in mind, I have read this manga once before. In total, it is about 155 chapters. And that will take a very long time to complete. <clears throat> but thus far, and I have looked on YouTube, I really have not found any videos actually doing a whole manga reading, narrative, and especially not commentary. Um, most certainly not. <clears throat> I really have not seen that. Um, so, this is going to take a long time, but <clears throat> I do not often stop and do videos in which I'm just discover, just discussing basically what I think about, um, the the manga in general um basically i um and i can just cut on some gameplay footage for now in the background but basically to be entirely honest when i was first doing these claymore manga readings i didn't think i didn't know i did not really know exactly what i wanted to do and so, I think now, after reading chapter 13 and 14, I sort of have really gotten into, how should I say, I, I have really become comfortable with just stating my opinions and being very open in my commentary, because to be entirely honest, um, I think that is the true value of the series. If it has any value at all, it is basically in that you get to listen to someone read the manga in real time and basically just give you their own unfiltered opinions. So, um, and I have had very interesting discussions in the forums, you know, in the comment forums with different people, um, who basically appreciate um, that I'm doing this series. Um, I have stated my interest in branching out and doing other manga. Um, which, you know, I still plan on doing, but um, I really have not had the time to invest in doing that. And I, Since this is 155 chapters, I think, I should probably really spend the preponderance of my time in completing this. Um, so, um, to be entirely honest, I was somewhat surprised that many people even took an interest in it. Um, but yes, basically, I know how I'm, you know, how to do this, um, in a fairly, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is somewhat hoarse. Um, I know how to do this in a fairly natural way, which was what I wanted to get in the hang of as I was doing many of these videos. Now, as you look through basically me reading chapters 1 through 14, you'll recognize that in a lot of them I'm not, you know, I sort of give less commentary in many of those episodes. In some cases, I more more or less read straight through. Um, 
to be entirely honest, I wasn't necessarily sure how many people liked the commentary or just sort of watch it, basically. Um, so, you know, it took a long time for me to actually decide to just fully express that commentary without any, um, without any sort of hesitation. In regard to anime and manga, I think as a medium of art, it provides a lot to talk about that I think most people do not talk about, you know, or at least I think there is sort of an expectation. This is, you know, there's a sort of, how should I say, innate or inherent weirdness to anime and manga to the point of which I think most people just, rather than talking about it, rather than thinking about it, I think most people just accept it. They don't really ask many cultural questions or many, um, they do not even ask many, well, we could go on a deeper level, philosophical questions. Um, sort of, um, questions about all types of things. Whether you're talking about the morality of the decisions of the characters or, you know, their personality and many other things such as that. Um, I just simply think that most people do not really get into conversations like that. And for myself, just like in my Elden Ring podcast series, I have said I've been watching for... I've been looking for channels where people were more open and had more candor in their discussions. That was not something I was able to find, and eventually I just decided... I am going to buy a microphone and try to do it myself. And so that is where much of this content that you see comes from, or at least the content that has to do with media and not, you know, uh, basically religion and cultural matters. You know, which in a sense, you know, all of those types of issues or rather subjects do sort of, how should I say, they sort of come together. I I can't talk about, or rather I cannot have a serious discussion about anime and manga without to some extent talking about Japanese culture. And on a deeper level, you know, especially in regard to some of the spiritual things regarding, um, you know, Japanese manga, it is hard not to take into account Shinto religion and animistic religion. These are, or these can be very deep discussions regarding anime and manga that you barely see. You barely see many people talking about a lot of the cultural, um, you know, depth of, of most manga and anime. Now, I myself started watching Claymore. I did not read the manga at first. But after watching the manga, I thought... I re- I, not, no, never mind. After watching the anime, um, I did mess, mess up there. Um, I decided I just want to read the manga. I want to see what this is about. You know... Because oftentimes when I read manga, um, and many people may be aware of this, it is very, you know, you can read through a manga pretty fast. So I just wanted to know, all right, I want to read this from the beginning to the end. Every, basically read everything in it and everything that has to do with it. Because it was very strange to me. Because when I first saw Claymore, I thought, all right, we have women carrying big swords. I understand the Berserk reference. Um... I sort of understand the culture. Um, um, excuse me. Oh, goodness. Um, I had to clear my throat. Um, but basically, you know, many of us are familiar with the big sword culture. Many of us are familiar with cloud strife. You know, I've talked about before, Guts, Berserk, and, you know, a lot of those different, different, you know, types of, of characters that we have seen. 
And so, you know, when I first saw Claymore, I sort of related it to Berserk. To me, Claymore is more boring and repetitive than Berserk, but nonetheless, it was very interesting to me at the time. And so, as I read from beginning to end, um, I might as well be frank, I, I was quite, you know, surprised because, you know, a lot of it has to do with basically cannibalism. A lot of it has to do with basically these Claymore women and, you know, other people sort of becoming mo- more monstrous as you sort of read through the through the whole manga. I am not going to attempt to spoil that for you, but right now I'm just having a general discussion about um, basically my opinions of it all. Um, I have to say, um, this is not the first sort of graphic, bloody, sort of sexual um, manga or that I've read. Or even in regard to anime. I had seen anime and, and I'd read manga that was far more bloody and sort of disgusting than Claymore, but um you know, it always it never really ceases to surprise me how <clears throat> excuse me. Oh goodness, my throat is hoarse. Um <clears throat> But it never ceases to um, to amaze me um, how imaginative some of these manga can be. Um, I I have to say that um, for myself, it seemed it it seemed all very sexual to me. I am not going to lie, from the outfits, from the Claymore sort of garb and armor, um, you know, from the, much of the, how should I say, the, the dialogue between the characters, you know, there was a lot that I could see and I could sort of recognize as basically being fetishistic. Um... <clears throat> I mean, you had other people eating people, and you had different things in it, and you had Yoma, and, you know, as you may read yourself or you may see on the channel, you had a lot of things that, to be entirely honest, they just sort of put a question mark in my head, but nonetheless, as I pondered upon it, I started to think... Wait, this has to do with someone's sort of fantastical ideas that are somewhat, to be in all honesty, perverted. Um, which, you know, for me, I'm a mature man. You know, these things do not surprise me. But for myself... I did not see really many people talking about, wait, all right, why is there such an emphasis upon cannibalism and sort of eating people and eating humans and, you know, why is there such an emphasis upon that? I mean, it, there's a really, really big emphasis upon it. And oftentimes in these manga and anime discussions, People just seem to accept weird things and not really ask questions about them. Which, I guess maybe it's not weird to most people. Maybe most people, for whatever reason, do not think it is weird that you, you know, sort of have a whole manga <clears throat> um, in which you have such an emphasis upon eating human flesh. Um... And that is only going to deepen as I continue to read it. For those of you who have not read very in-depth of of it. But anyhow, excuse me, I have to clear my throat, people. Alright. This time of year is always... Mm. 
is always always like this for me um uh which I suppose makes me regret that I did not do as many of these videos when it was when it was warm I live in a colder part of the United States or at least during this time of year um you know maybe some of you on the west coast are you know maybe you're not as cold I will put it that way but um around this time of year you know the temperature sort of drops um, a good deal and I'm not in, on the west coast I'm not in a particularly warm area I will just put it that way um but anyhow yes um not many people talk about the fact that you have a really big emphasis on just eating people and I mean just graphic type of 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 sort of themes and really sexual type of concepts not many people talk about it, but not many people, as far as I'm aware, really talked about the fact that in Berserk, you literally have bestiality with a horse, okay, who sort of violated, or at least tried to violate a woman. Um, I mean, there were some pretty weird things in Berserk, and I have to say, in manga and anime, I suppose... You know, you could consider it par for the course, but nonetheless, um, it is not often talked about. Many people just sort of, you know, either they're not interested in talking about it, or it's just it is just not a popular thing to do. Um, excuse me, but you know, for whatever reason, myself, what I recognize is I kept reading the manga. I kept thinking, wow. You know, to me, and I know some of you probably think, uh, in just about every chapter I talk about the writing. And this is because I read quite a lot. I know what good writing is. And some people might be thinking, well, why are you talking about the writing quality? You should know that the writing quality is not going to be that good. You're reading a comic book. And so, therefore, you should not really expect that the writing is going to be that that incredible. But for me, as a person who reads you know, short stories, novels, all types of books on a daily basis, and even does some fantasy-type writing himself for role-play, right? You know, D&D-type, you know, fantasy stuff, you know, occasionally occasionally I have to say for me writing and everything is sort of something I critique and so for things like Claymore you know horror which I, I suppose Claymore is more or less bio horror you know and I in comic books you know horror genres and many things like suspense and surprise are a good deal harder to capture because you cannot really do it in the same way in which you would do in a short story. In a short story, you can often have more build-up. In other words, the sort of experience becomes more intense over time. Whereas in, you know, in a, in a manga series or comic book series, um, I just put it this way, that's not so much the case. Um, oftentimes, you know, things go very fast. You know, the plot sort of goes very fast. And much of what your experience is, is just looking at the images. And the more sort of extreme the image is, the more emotional impact, you know, your narrative and your artwork has. In other words, you know, you know something mundane or something logical or sensible sort of transpiring in a very, you know, in a way in which you would be able to conceive you know, if any of you understand that, it's very, it is not so very, it does not translate well to comic books. And so often in comic books, the idea is sort of making you see one more extreme scene over, you know, after one after the next. In other words, 
you know, of the scene and the artwork and what is happening does not surprise you. It is not so very good in comic book, you know, writing because the the comic book writing is not so much about the writing as it is what you see in the artwork, and that can be done well to an extent if you are able to basically keep the writing and artwork fluid. In other words, for example, in Claymore, when I say bad writing, a lot of what I has what I say has to do with repetition. For example, we have a scene in Claymore that often happens, especially in the beginning, in which, you know, a Claymore girl will go to a townsperson and say, hey, you know, the, the, or rather, the townsperson will always come up to the Claymore sort of scared and say, oh, who should I pay? Oh, pay the man in black. Pay the man in black. Don't, don't pay me. Pay the man in black. And th- that is done in a very sort of, how should I say, a rigid sort of serious way which you know when I think about it in retrospect it always seems very um, repetitive and as though all right, we've seen this scene once or twice and we keep seeing it and you know for many people like myself it just becomes very boring you know after and if you're wondering what happened in this game um, I basically got lost. For those of you who want to find this game, it's called The Hunted Forge of Demons. You should be able to find easily find a pretty easy repack of it and just play it on PC for free if you want. It is a very old game. Um, but basically, I got lost in it. So, I mean, that's what happened here, to be honest. But yes, um, you know... In retrospect, I just think that Claymore was really repetitive. A little too repetitive. Um, With those scenes of payment, because basically, eventually I began to come to the conclusion, wait, you know, these Claymores have, and I believe I read in chapter 14, they have been working, have had sort of generations of these Claymores. They've basically had 77 generations of, of Claymore's by the time of Teresa. And after Teresa, we have Claire, who was also Claymore. And and Claire, you know, that's even for, that's after Teresa. So when you think about how many generations of Claymore's there have been, and the fact that these townspeople, these villagers, they do not know how to do business with the Claymore's. And you would think, wait, of course they do, because they've been dealing with the Claymore's for over 77 generations. That is, you know, you can only imagine how long of a time that is. So, it makes very little sense. Um, excuse me, I have to clear my throat again. Um. Alright, um, but yes. So, I mean... For whatever reason, the the villagers have no idea how to do business with the Claymores. Which, you know, I thought that was weird. I basically, you know, using logic, I basically said, that is bad writing. Okay, and basically, you know, if you watch those episodes, you really realize that I am talking about that writing as though it is, is terrible. Now... In regard to a particular episode that had to do with the chapter of the mummy in the church, um, you know, what was interesting is I decided to do research on that topic, and I said, I wonder if there are churches or monasteries with real mummies in them. And, you know, I found out, yes, there is. You know, so has there been any real sort of um, really cultural real cultural research that sort of went into this, to this manga, I would say yes. You know, the aesthetic is very interesting. The religious elements are very interesting. Um, To be honest, though, you know, after reading the entire anime, I have to say, um, maybe it was somewhat, um, how should I say, perhaps it was somewhat... Um, what would be the word? 
perhaps they could have did more of the religious elements in the in the manga among I mean from my whole reading of the manga I really did not understand very much about that religion you know even the whole idea behind the goddesses Teresa and Claire because that's who they're named after they're named after two goddesses to me all of it seems as though I did not really get to learn very much about that because you know as you read most chapters they're mostly fighting bloodshed you know you have these yoma eating people and different things um and now I'm getting sort of into the whole discussion about the more sexual matter and what I happen to see that you know is very disturbing to most people to me and many other people who sort of see it in manga shout enthusiasm you know um and many of you who have read Claymore, you know what is in there. You know that the, the manga artist or the manga writer decided to sort of portray children in a certain way um, in some cases. And you know, for me, and I'm sure for many of you, at least a good deal of you, I imagine, you think that's disturbing and I, you know, I completely understand why. You know, many people do not talk about it. I mean, you, as we read later into the manga, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Though we have already seen a lot. In chapter 14, when we saw, you know, Claire as a little girl, basically below the age of 11, you know, or 12, because she's really young in that particular episode. In that particular, you know, you know, particular, um, issue of the manga um no she's not that old she she has to be at least be what you know eight nine years old if not seven years old and the fact that they had basically two or three scenes in that manga where she is a little girl in her her clothes like her shirt she has no dress on she's completely topless the only thing she has on her underwear i I've been told by some people in these comment forums, I'm not going to say who, you know, I don't like to really say names too much, um, on the channel. And, you know, I've had very good discussions with this individual. He emphasized to me he had a disagreement, so to speak, respectful disagreement. And he basically said, you know, I do not think that Claymore is sexual. It, and he told me that he basically does not think that Claymore really has any type of sexuality in it. Um, that I was not, you know, I basically disagree with that. I really do. To me, it is overtly sexual. Whether you have a narrative context behind why a little girl, you know, does not have any sort of clothing on and is basically n nearly naked... Um, I, you know, I have to disagree. I think that that is, um, done for an obvious reason. And the obvious reason it is done is to basically emphasize the nakedness, the nudeness of this little girl. I mean, when you're drawing a little girl, you know that that is a little girl that's not an adult woman. You know, so for, you know, for the artist to keep a little girl basically without clothes and sort of portray them in that way you know half naked but with basically just some underwear on them you know sort of covering their groin area um you know no I think the artist knows exactly what he's doing you know in, in terms of adult characters you know yes there is sex appeal regarding them too um but to be honest um, when I think about the that idea behind basically just um, you know you have a narrative idea for why she's naked no for me um, you know I, I read a lot of manga and anime for me I'm not surprised by very much 
you know, it takes a lot to surprise me. It really does. You know, um, and I really, you know, considering it comes from Japan, I should not be surprised because I already know a lot about Japanese culture. Um, which is, you will see more of me talking about Japanese culture in my, in my videos. Um, is a good deal different from what we consider to be American culture, Western culture in many cases. Um, I have to clear my throat again. Please excuse me. All right. Um, but yes, you know, I do talk about cultural context and... Um, Um, in this um, in this manga, and I always do that when I cover media. For me, you know, that is very important um, to understand why we are seeing, you know, what we are seeing or reading what we're reading. And in regard to Japan, there is sort of a, I mean, there's sort of a big, a big thing. I, I guess I could say a big cultural liking towards young girls and even young boys. You know, what you may call, there's a word that, you know, is we use for it. I try not to use it on my YouTube channel because YouTube will censor you if you use it. Um, but basically, what I like to call child enthusiasm. I'm sure you can sort of understand that, that that is basically sexual content that involves minors. And so, in much Japanese manga, in much Japanese media, you will see it. Um, you will see a lot of child enthusiasm. I have to warn anyone who is sort of new to that, that yes, if you watch anime and manga, you know, for whatever reason, it is allowed in a lot of um, Japanese media. Um, one moment, please. All right. But yes, um, you know, that is a particular quality that, you know, I see clearly. Um, whether other people see it or not, um, I do not really understand how you could not see it but I certainly do um when I read chapter 14 I knew full straight away I said to me in my opinion this is some type of fetish this is a you know a particular you know to me that was just intentional I could not see that without thinking it was intentional to take that girl's um you know and let me see maybe I can find it here okay I believe that was chapter 14 of the Claymore manga I think I'll pause this yeah I'll pause that um and let's just look back at it to be honest, let's just take a look at it. Um, so this was chapter 14 of the Claymore manga. Um, I often talk about this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when she dipped into the water, she was topless. When she dipped into the water, she had nothing on her chest. Um... Now we have to remember this is a little girl um, that they depicted in this way. This is not an adult woman. This woman is this girl is an eighteen, um, and the way they portrayed her, it, it was like it's just like I said in chapter in the episode. I said basically she is you know she's treating her like an animal. She's saying oh it's like having a new pet. And I, mean, I mean I thought yeah yeah the artist the. The manga author, he was having quite a lot of fun with this. And, 
you cannot tell me that he did not know what he was doing. He, you know, this is, there's a very good reason you do this. You know, there's a very good reason you do that. And I would also say, for me, I had to look, you know, differently at a lot of the violence that was occurring to, you know, to the little girl. Because I, I said, you know, this is a little girl. This is a little girl. And I, you know, I just say, um, in chapter 14, you know, Claire, you know, she was just being kicked around. She was being beat up by Teresa. And I mean, it was not even, you have to think about this. You know, she's being knocked down to the ground, face down, just laid out, you know, kicked around, beat up, really abused. And considering that, you know, in chapter 14, we get to see this little girl basically nude without clothing. Okay. In in our chapter 14 reading of this manga, um, yeah, I had to think about some things and I had to really assess it. And I, I came to the conclusion, I said, yeah, this is fetishistic. There's fetishes involved in this. And this was just pretty crazy. I mean, she when she fell off that cliff, you know, and of course the idea is, is that the, the branch broke her fall. You know, Teresa, instead of helping her up, just kicks her right in the water. Now, for some of you, you may think, well, you know, so what? We are not l- using logic. In order to get out of that water and to survive, you have to know how to swim. There's some depth to that. You know, that water is deep. You could technically drown in it. All right? You could technically drown in that water. So, for whatever reason, this little girl knows how to swim. You know, I guess it's not that deep, but it's just, I mean, it has to be deep enough to where, you know, I mean, you can see her legs in in that part of the water. That is deep enough to drown in to, to, to an extent. But even so, I mean, it's just a level of brutality that was just laid out on that little girl. Considering all of the sexual stuff I've seen in this manga, you know, I had to say, and I do not know if many people will watch through the part in chapter 14 when I said, when I saw this, I basically said, no, this has to be some type of fetish stuff. I mean, they just treated that little girl far too, too callously in this manga to an almost cartoonish extent but you know for me this is supposed to be a more type of mature manga it's not supposed to be you know sort of a cartoonish violence no the violence is supposed to be bloody and mature I thought that was sort of the appeal of this manga so I mean when you kick a little girl and you just beat her up and you basically just do all this stuff to her I mean for me I take it seriously because you know this is not cartoon violence but even if it was cartoon violence you know, oftentimes, you don't see a little girl treated that badly in, you know, even cartoons, even cartoons that are like lesser, you know, I mean, violence against children is pretty, I mean, that's pretty serious. Let me just put it that way, especially when you have a grown woman, basically, I mean, whether she is 16 or they come up with all types of ideas, you know, she is a lot older than the child. Okay, this is... This is pretty, this was pretty vicious to me, and it made me think, what is with the sort of exaggerated, sort of almost overbearing type of violence against Claire when she's that age? I'm just thinking, all right, this is kind of crazy. And I'm sure people have all types of justifications for it. The fact that when I get to this point, the little girl is basically naked, except for a little small bit of underwear right there between her legs. If it wasn't for that, we'd be able to see every part of her. I just think, wait, this little girl, they portrayed her like that. This is fetish stuff. I I just have to say, this is the artist's type of fantasy, you know, for me. That is what I think, okay? And I think when... And one of the things that... I'm just going to say it. One of the things that has sort of been used against the anime and manga community is this. 
the fact that you have people in the manga and anime anime community, they do not say anything about things like this. This is a minor who is basically naked. And a lot of you do not talk about things like this. And this is why, you know, the discussions are always limited in, in the manga and anime community. You know, regardless of where you go, you would think there would be all types of videos talking about the intricacies, the cultural differences, and the different things that we find in manga. And some of the more serious matters, like when you have little girls, little girls portrayed this way. How many people have talked about it? I've seen so many people on YouTube, when they talk about Claymore, it's almost as though... This is some type of wholesome thing to them. And I'm thinking, wait, wait. You don't see what I am seeing? You don't see the cannibal, the cannibalism fetish? You don't see the sort of child enthusiasm? The sort of child enthusiasm fetish and all of those other types of fetishes? You don't see it? You mean to tell me you, you read this whole manga or you watched that whole anime and you did not see any of these fetishes, any of these sexual things? And I would just say you have to be willfully ignorant or completely blind to not see some of the sexual stuff in it. And am I saying, hey, you know, this is a bad thing. I don't like reading this. No, I'm just saying, you know, if you read the manga and anime, I think some of us should be honest about the fact that this is in it. You know, I read anime and manga. I have my criticisms of it. I appreciate it for what it is. But at the same time, you know, I have never really been one to not talk about some of the weird stuff I see. I, I would like more discussions like that to happen. The, the sad thing is I think people are a little too cowardly to do it. And I, I hate to say that, but I just have to say it. Um, in my commentary, I really have not sort of had any type of fear in sort of getting on anyone's bad side. Um in these particular videos. Um, I just have not. I just felt the need to express my opinions just fully. You know, a lot of people have been watching, so I guess I'm doing something right. Um, actually, um, please give me one moment. Um, All right. Um, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> um, my throat is sort of dry, and um, I do have a bit of a cold. But yes, I mean, there's going to be a lot more of this. Um, you know, to be honest. In this, in this manga, and I'm going to comment on every single instance of child enthusiasm that I see. Because to me, I just think it is awfully weird. I, you know, I understand that there are a lot of child enthusiasts in Japan. I mean, don't get me wrong, I understand that, you know, there's a lot of child enthusiasm in this country here in the United States, but, um... I have to say, for myself, that is another reason why I like to do, you know, the sort of narrative, the sort of narration and commentary of a manga, because there's a lot of things I, lo I have been thinking about for a long time that sort of think, hey, look at this, isn't this strange? Let's talk about this. Um, for those of you who are viewers, you know... Um, please do not be afraid to post in the comment forum. Um, as I've said continuously, and I cannot say it enough, my comment forum is very open. I use the newest first sorting, um, which is just a very good way to sort your comments and it makes it so that they stay up, that you see the comments, that you're able to keep your comments on the in the comment section. In other words, if you comment, in all likelihood, I'm going to see exactly what you've written. Um, but yes, I mean, I have to say that, um, 
you know, I do not think I've seen anyone really do a series like this for manga, but, you know, thus far it has been quite fulfilling. I have no idea how many people have been watching from start to finish. You know, I know of a few people. I have no idea if they're still watching the channel. But, you know, the show must go on. Um, I do have some people who do come into the comment forums and say, hey, you know, thank you for doing this. And some, some person even said it was God's work. I said, oh, <laughs> you know, thank you. I mean, I don't know about that, but you see, myself, I like to read all... I like to read manga, I like to watch anime, and I just have not really been able to express my ideas and my opinions about it for a very long time. I have talked about manga and anime with other people, you know, probably when I was in high school. You know, but now I just think, you know, at this point, I don't really have anyone to talk about it with, the subject with, so... I might as well make some videos expressing, you know, some of my ideas. And of course, I have I have two nieces that watch anime, but I don't. I do not think that they read manga, um, and they certainly do not read manga as mature as Claymore, um, which they should not. You know, they're too young for that. You know, especially considering that you have child enthusiasm in it. I mean, but um. You know, I mean, I just, I really hope that all of us who are reading manga will be mature readers and that if we see something, you know, I mean, maybe we'll talk about it because, I mean, this whole thing about child enthusiasm in Japan, hey, it's gotten, it's gone really far. I mean, let me just put it this way. Here in the United States, yes, you can see it in media. But you you don't see it on the level that you see it in Japan. I mean, you can you can go to the store and buy a whole sort of manga. It's not even hentai, and you still see sort of little boys or little girls with much older sort of romantic partners. Basically, the the boys and girls are minors. You have it go the other way too. Some in some cases, in particular manga, you have little boys who are going with older women. Or just, you know, girls who are like a boy who's like 10 or 9 years old who's going, who has some type of romantic relationship with a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old girl or something like that. Or they'll do different things where they say, oh, well, you know, this little girl or whoever is, is, she's actually a thousand years old. I know she looks like a little girl, but she's a thousand years old. She's a thousand years old. No, she's 2,000 years old. Okay, you have weird little narrative justifications like that to explain why you have a little girl for a grown man. And even some of us who sort of looked at Final Fantasy 13, I mean, and the whole Sarah and Snow thing, I mean, of course, it looked kind of weird. Got this big man, this very small woman. I mean, that, that seemed kind of strange to many of us. But, you know, I mean, that's a different thing because they're both apparently, I mean, because you have shorter women. You have taller men. You know, you have relationships like that. But that's entirely different. In some manga, you have literally... You have literal minors with people who are adults. And some people may say, Hey, I'm being kind of... How should I say? Really stern and strict about it. But I do not think that I am. I just think I'm being... What I used to... What I think is normal about it. I will put it that way. I don't think that most people think it is normal or even acceptable for a minor to be with someone who is like way older than them. I mean, if it's a little girl or a little boy and we see it in the manga, I mean, why are there not more people talking about things like this? But I mean, you know, that is just one thing that I've noticed. What else did I see in the manga that I can talk about? Well, the whole thing about how they carry their swords, you know, which is not surprising. Just like I have told you, before I started reading this, I knew about Berserk. I read some of Berserk. I've seen the anime. I know about the whole big sword thing. To me, it gets rather ridiculous because I'm thinking, okay, what's the purpose of having so big a sword when you just carry it with one hand? 
I mean, but hey. I mean, you know, it gets pretty crazy. Um, I've never been able to understand the logic of having, you know, characters who have such big swords, but for whatever reason they don't use, they do not use two hands to carry it, even if they have that much strength to carry it. Obviously, you would have more control of your weapon if you used both hands. The characters sort of take a lot of pride in the fact that they can carry a great sword with just one hand, but, you know, I mean, that has always seemed strange to me, and in the earlier episodes, you kind of see that this is something that sort of, you know, I sort of think about, I really have not been able to really get over it, to, to put it that way. Um, anyhow... Please give me one moment. I will be back very soon. But yes. Um, every time I see it, it sort of grates on my nerves. Because I think... Um, you know... Um... I mean, great swords were made for two hands. Um, and so, if you know anything about swords, and you see how they treat them, they, they stick them in the ground, um, you know, and of course, there is one um, YouTuber who actually, I think he makes big swords, or he, he has bought a few big swords that were specially made, you know, to sort of imitate the berserk, you know, Guts greatsword, and I think basically what he did with it, he says that they're so big you can actually put them in the ground and it really does not do very much to them because it's just so much metal that basically putting that sword in the ground, you know, it doesn't matter or something like that, but to be honest, I, I mean, most swords you don't, you, you try not to, to put them in the ground or hit too much metal or just dull the blades. Um, you know, that often is something that's not done. You know, for obvious reasons. But, you know, in manga and anime, realism is not something that you really see that much of. Um, which, you know, is not the biggest issue. You know, especially in regard to the writing. The writing has other issues, and I would have to say that realism is just not something you that you would often even expect in the manga to begin with. Um, but for me, the greatest issue with the writing has to do with repet you know, repetition. Um, how are the fights? You know, the fights will become more intense and pretty crazy, and I think because the fights were so crazy in this manga, I think that took away from what, you know, could have been used, you know, as different issues released to explain more about the story and the religion and the culture. I think that this particular manga failed in that sense. Because to be honest, you know, there were a lot of things that um, even now I'm somewhat confused about. Um, in regard to this whole Yoma thing, um, you know, the, the manga treats it as something that you're, they want the reader to become more comfortable with it as time goes on. Now, I will not tell you why, some of you who have read the manga already know why, I mean, um, it's go it is going to become abundantly clear why they try to make the townspeople seem really stupid um, because they're basically going to show Yama claymores and these different type of individuals and other you know interesting individuals in a whole different way you know um, but Basically, um, 
I have to say that, um, at the very least, one good thing I can say about Claymore is that it was interesting, it was weird, but I think even that is going to become repetitive. Um, for you, as for myself, having read the manga, I mean, I think the fights and sort of the monsters that, that we're going to see, I mean, they may become as sort of, um, I mean, you may get tired of seeing these same types of, um, of beings, I'll just put it that way, because I don't want to spoil too much, um, you know, these entities or whatever, um, to me it became awfully played out, basically, eventually the manga sort of gets into this whole thing about who's a, you know, a bigger and better monster than, you know, whoever, um, but, um, yes, I mean, as I've said, it would be nice if more people sort of talked about some, some of the cultural things, too, um, you know, had, if people had more deeper discussions, if people were to read this, read manga, you know, and actually give more commentary about it. I often see manga reviews on YouTube, but people do not talk about much. They don't do hour-long videos where they're just talking about every aspect of things that they see. Be honest, people. How many YouTube channels have you seen where people literally dedicate hours hours talking about just about every single issue of the manga, every single detail of the manga. You rarely see that. I wanted to see that. I, I still want to see that. Uh, it would be nice if I was not the only one doing it, who was just reading you know, the manga and giving my honest reactions to what I'm seeing. I mean, I don't know. You know, maybe I'm not looking in the right places because I have not seen channels like that. I think there's a lot to talk about, but, um, you know, I have to say overall, um, I think it was the right decision to do this particular series. I think some people like it, you know, I think some people watch this series, this Claymore manga series off and on. I mean, I think some people sort of go back and forth with it. I think there were other people who probably got sick of waiting because, it, let me be honest, um, I took a long time to release videos. Okay? I'm trying to get in the hang of basically releasing at least one Claymore video a week. You know, I mean, this is 155 chapters, people. Um, and I think at some point I got into the sort of mindset where I thought I could rush this. But, you know, at this point, I've sort of realized, no, this is deeper than that. I have to give some very raw commentary, and I have to take my time and just just give my thoughts on the on the manga as I'm reading it. I think that's why most of you are here, is because you want to see that. You don't want to just see, you know, just a regular sort of straight manga reading. Because I had thoughts about sort of doing it more in that way, too. And you will see that as you look through the 14 episodes which I have done, you know, they are, there's a sort of wide gulf of time period, you know, between those. I mean, this is going all the way back to last year. Um, so there's a lot of space between when, when I've done these. I will put it that way. I've been doing these Claymore videos since last winter, and I've only done about 14 episodes. Um, and that was due to a lack of initiative on my part, as well as the fact that I had about three relatives who passed over. And so, it was a crazy time. Um, and to be entirely honest, I was not in the best of spirits. I couldn't really, I could not really, um, sort of, um, keep a steady stream of episodes, which I think uh, there were at least two people waiting for, um, maybe more who were subscribers, maybe they still are and maybe they're not. Um, 
I felt at that time the need to talk about some cultural issues. You know, basically talk about some different subjects in my videos. And I will put it this way. As a commentary channel, um, this is a channel which, um, in which I basically talk about a wide range of all different types of subjects. Um, from society to religion to, you know, just about everything you can think of. You know, um, Shinto, you know, matters of complexion in the Hindu caste system, um, la Latino culture even. I mean, I talk about all types of different cultural trends, basically. Um, so basically, I do videos on an impulse. But, you know, for me, you know, the Claymore videos are special to me because this was the first time I sort of did a consistent series, you know, um, so these videos will continue, um, it would seem, unless I have some type of unfortunate, you know, situation in which I have to stop them. But as I've said before, I am planning to read all 155 chapters and basically go through all of the craziness in it. And some of you know what I'm talking about. If you've read this manga, if you've seen the anime, you know how crazy it's going to get. You know how absolutely wild this is going to get. And basically, I'm gonna, I am going to talk about all of that stuff, try to talk about the cultural implications of having so much cannibalism in the manga, all of the bloodshed, all of the weird sexual stuff that they do. Yes, I'm going to talk about all of it. And I know that some of you are probably really waiting for that because you're, you're probably wondering, what am I going to say? I know some of you are, are, are waiting for that, you know, even though it may not be many of you because, you know, my Claymore videos seem to get the lowest amount of views. And I think that's, that is because mostly, you know, people, I think, don't really want to watch sort of manga videos where someone reads straight through a lot of people who watch manga videos usually watch little short manga reviews or people just talking about, you know, different characters or doing character analyses and things like that. They usually don't watch a person just literally giving commentary straight through the whole chapter and narrating it. I think a lot of people are unfamiliar with that. I hope it becomes more popular, to be honest. Um, these are probably some of the funnest videos that I do. Um, to be honest, I would like to branch out, and I, I think I did, and I basically did with Uncle from Another World and reading some Pulp Fiction magazines, but to be entirely honest, um, not that many people are interested in Pulp Fiction, and I have to say, let me just admit it, Pulp Fiction is written so well that, um, whether I'm reading H.P. Lovecraft or Robert E. Howard or Clark Ashton Smith or any of those other excellent, you know, Pulp Fiction authors, I have to go to dictionaries to understand everything in a lot of those Pulp Fiction magazines. Those are incredibly well-written books, you know, of Pulp Fiction. So, you know, those short stories, I love them and I would like to do more videos with them, but um, for now, I can just direct you, you know, to archive.org, get as many as you want. They are fairly easy to find. And for those of you who may, and I'm sure almost none of you are interested in it, but if you are, if you're like me and you know what I'm talking about, you know, you've probably already found them anyway, but you go to archive.org, you can find as many Paul Fitch magazines as you want. But when I read those, I have no problem with reading them. I actually prefer reading those over manga and comic books, especially when I'm doing narration. Because I think it's always more interesting to narrate a short story. But I will put it this way. When I am reading a Pulp Fiction magazine, um, the writing is so good and the word and the syntax is the word use and syntax is so good, I have to literally pull out my dictionaries, my dictionary programs, Star Dictionary and Golden Dictionary, and I have to basically search up words as I'm reading because the, the writing is that good. You know that writing is really good when you have a wide use of diction and word use. It's just incredible. Um, 
far superior than you know compared to what you would find in any comic book, manga, or even novels. They put people like you know George R. R. Martin to shame with some of the writings in pop fiction magazines, and those are just short stories. But as I like to say, sometimes you know quality is better than quantity. You know, sometimes a short story can be written better than a novel. And I think Pulp Fiction magazines really prove that. And a lot of these writers from the 1920s and 30s, they really had an excellent grasp grasp of the English language. A really almost supernatural grasp of the English language. They were incredible. And I think a lot of people, even, you know, even myself, I am still studying, you know, a lot of these Pulp Fiction magazines trying to basically, and I'm basically trying to emulate and sort of imitate a lot of that writing style um, because it is so good. I think if a person were not trying to imitate it after having read any Pulp Fiction magazines, whether you're talking about H.P. Lovecraft, The Lovecraft Circle, His Friends, or any of those people who wrote a lot of those, those works, I think it would be foolish not to because they were, they had an excellent degree of knowledge about how to use the English English language just excellent but you know um, I may branch out eventually but right now I think it is better if I just become really comfortable at reading Claymore and sort of work from that and then I will look at other manga for example I started you know, I still want to finish Uncle from Another World, um, which I have basically read the manga before. New issues may have been released, and there are a few more that I would like to like to see because I think one of the most interesting things I like to do with media when I am reviewing media is really talk about a lot of the cultural implications. That to me. It's the fun I have on the channel, to be honest. So, um, and I think some of the manga I'm going to have to look up again because I think I've forgotten some titles, to be honest. I mean, there's so, so many different types of manga that I have plans to read. Um, that to be honest, um, I just have a well of content coming up and I hope it it sort of stays that way if I'm in the same spirit that I am in now you know you should expect a a good deal of of episodes coming on the channel um of basically manga episodes different types of commentary um to be honest a wide range as always but I really you know, I kind of felt that I really owe a few of my manga, you know, the, the manga viewers, you know, some of the people who watch this channel specifically for manga, manga, I feel that I owe you, you know, more content. So that's, that is what I'm trying to do because I feel, you know, when you, you know, for example, when I had stopped making a lot of the manga videos and I had like two or three months of pause, um, I think, you know, that was not really that fair to a lot of you who subscribed and just watch on a daily basis. Um, because that really gave a drought of content for me too, because, um, I think the manga reading is a big part of this channel. Um, a lot of people come to watch more of the, the Christian quietist quietistic content, the religious content, having to do with all types of religious matters. Um, you know, but you know, this channel was originally about video games and, you know, for me, I also think that for the people who who have subscribed for the video game content, which mostly has to do with FromSoft, um, you know, much of my comment commentary has to do with FromSoft video games like Elden Ring. 
I am still planning to play Armored Core 6, and I am planning to have more gameplay footage, so basically I can um, use that um, as basically commentary gameplay, which I have to say commentary gameplay is an excellent, you know, I really like it. Um, I really like to use it, but I do need to get more of it. This is an old game, you know, Hunter's Forge of Demons, which I will say it is pretty fun. You can see now that it's a very hard game. Hunter's Forge of Demons, that is, some of you Dark Souls and Elden Ring fans like games like this, I will say, you know, you probably would like this one. You had to use a lot of strategy to really win this game. It was pretty intense. You had two characters. You had to basically use teamwork to survive. I mean, you had bows and arrows. You had swords. It was it was crazy. It was it was a pretty intense game. Let me put it that way. Um. Yeah, and you can die if you if um you don't get help. Oh man, that was a pretty crazy experience. Um. But. You know, and in, in regard as to what I think, um, do I think Claymore is worth reading? Yes. I think Claymore is worth reading. Maybe for different reasons than most of you have. Personally, I just like sort of knowing what is in people's minds. And that may seem weird, but I mean that. Um, I like to know how people think and you may not understand what I'm saying but you can understand a lot about how people think and how a culture is changing or sort of developing by by reading different media you know or seeing different media experiencing different media um, I see a lot of things in manga that I can only attribute or that I can basically attribute most of Japanese culture. I mean, there are certain things you do not really see in American comic books. I mean, which is really interesting. Um, you know, that you will see in a lot of um, Japanese comic books. I mean, the whole cannibalism thing in, in Claymore, whoa. I mean, sort of this emphasis on eating human flesh. It is going to become more intense. It really is. And is is it is that you you were probably wondering is that going to be portrayed in a sexual way? Um, I won't get into details, but yes, it is. Um, it sort of makes me wonder what the author was thinking and what type of of um what type of ideas he really has. Um just pertaining to life, sexuality, and all types of things, but I can tell you, um, I would call it outside of the norm, pretty strange, let me put it that way, um, a lot of these people who write manga are, you know, what you would, you know, if, if you knew more about them, which I think you can know a lot about a person from their art. You can learn a lot about a person just by reading what they write. You know. Um, I'll just put it this way. Um, I am not going to, to mince words. I'm going to give my honest opinions when we read those future chapters. When we read, when we read the rest of these Claymore chapters. Um, there was a time when I sort of was trying to sort of not really speak my mind as much. But now I'm thinking, no. If you watch this channel, you you want my opinion. So, you know. I can't really hold my tongue about, about things. If I want to really do videos on a consistent level, I have to really give my fullest con commentary. And please join the discussion. Um... But yeah, um, this is um, certainly 
you know, manga itself, you know, Claymore and anything else is, you know, for me, it is pretty entertaining. Even though I have a lot of questions about what I see. Um, and basically, I've been, you know, watching anime and reading manga since I was a teenager, so, you know, um, but, you know, regardless if anyone is going to discuss some of the, you know, some of the narrative and some of the art, you know, artwork with me, you know, I'm certainly just going to be talking into this microphone, so, um, this has been a very, very, um, interesting experience. Um, as I said, um, this was, oh, it's still lost in this. I forgot how this, this playthrough went. But anyhow, um, yeah, don't be afraid to post in the comments. I sort of have run out of things to say. Um, yeah, this was just an intermission of just me sort of summarizing my experience of basically doing 14 episodes of this, so, um... It has been fun so far. I'd just like to say, may you be blessed and farewell, people. Um, there will be many, hopefully many, future episodes of my Claymore reading. Um, if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comment section. I will be reading them. 